In 1941, times had changed for the German U-boats. It was more difficult to find convoys, and the ones that were found were given stronger escort. In the first 14 days of January 1941, U-boats had managed to sink only two vessels in North Atlantic. This was due to the number of operational submarines, as well as adverse weather conditions. Three famous German U-boat commanders, Gunther Prien, Joachim Schepke, and Otto Kreschmer, decided to take leave with their crews. They were national heroes, and everyone wanted to meet them. The most known and admired was Gunther Prien, the bull of Scapa Flow, who sank British battleship HMS Royal Oak. Otto Kreschmer was the most successful U-boat ace, who sank 46 ships and damaged another five during World War II. The last one, Joachim Schepke, was the 11th most successful German submarine commander during the World War II. In 1941, he was just 20 years old. He was elegant, handsome, very confident, and approachable at the same time. Unlike Preen and Kretschmer, he was happily giving official speeches at Nazi party rallies, keenly supporting Hitler's regime. A few weeks later, all of them were out of action. Kreschmer was taken prisoner of war. Preen and Schepke were dead. Three famous aces were eliminated within just a few days. Was that the beginning of the end for the Nazi wolf packs? Among the submarines sent on the first patrols in February 1941 were the most famous ones, U-47, commanded by the Bull of Scapa Flow, Gunther Preen, and Otto Kreschmer's U-99. On the 6th of March, Preen located North Atlantic Convoy OB-293 of 35 ships, sailing for ports in North America. OB-293 was escorted by four ships, two destroyers, HMS Wolverine and HMS Verity, both equipped with ASDIC, also known as Sonar, and two corvettes, HMS Arbutus and HMS Camellia. Preen reported sighting to the U-boat command, and later the same day he was joined by U-99, U-70, and U-A, the most successful foreign U-boat commissioned into the Craig's Marine. At one point that evening, U-47 and U-99 were so close, both commanders were able to speak by megaphones. The decision could have been only one, strike at night. The initial attack was quite successful, with Kreschmer's U-99 slipping into the convoy. The surfaced U-boat sunk British tanker Athel Beach, already hit by U-70, and fired a torpedo at the whale factory ship Turgi Vikenend probably damaged by Preen's U-47. The other submarines were not that lucky. U-70 hit two ships during her first attack and midstrecked the Dutch tanker on her second attack. After being hit by a torpedo, Midstrecht's master spotted U-70's periscope. He immediately made the right decision and his tanker rammed submerged U-boat, damaging her conning tower. Ms. Drecht reported the submarine's position to the escort, and at 8.15 a.m., the crew on HMS Camellia spotted the U-boat on the surface trying to escape. U-70 crash-dived, but it was too late. Both corvettes dropped 48 depth charges. The last attack forced U-70 to surface, and at 12.44, she was abandoned. 25 out of 45 crew were rescued and taken as prisoners of war. On the 7th of March, Gunter Prins had U-47 gone missing. His U-boat was attacked by HMS Wolverine, and the credit for sinking the most famous U-boat commander was given to this British destroyer. It is now believed that the attacked submarine was not U-47, but U-A, commanded by Hans Egerman. She survived, reaching Lorient on the 18th of March, and Preen's boat is recorded as lost due to an uncaused.
There is a lot of theories what happened to U-47, including being sunk by mines, own torpedoes, or even mechanical failure. Out of the four U-boats attacking, two were sunk, and the third one was damaged. This was disaster. Two days later, on 9th of March 1941, U-110 departed Kiel, heading for Lorient. The man in charge of the submarine was Fritz Julius Lemp, a commander who sank passenger liner Athenia in the first day of war with Great Britain. On the 15th of March 1941, the watch on U-110's conning tower spotted ships on the horizon. It was the North Atlantic Convoy HX-112 from Halifax, Canada. The ships were heading for Liverpool, carrying war materials. Many of them were tankers. Escort consisted of three destroyers, HMS Walker, HMS Vanuck, and HMS Volunteer, and two corvettes, HMS Hydrangea and HMS Bluebell. All ships were under the command of Donald McIntyre. As the cargo was extremely important, the 5th Escort Group were additionally reinforced by two destroyers when the convoy was entering the western approaches. Lemp sent report to U-Boat Command and decided to pursue the convoy. On the 16th of March, he fired three torpedoes and hit British tanker Aerodona. Although the vessel exploded and 32 sailors died on board, Aerodona didn't sink. HMS Thames towed the tanker to Edisvik near Reykjavik. After extensive repairs, Aerodona returned to service in 1944. U-110 was found and forced underwater. Lemp's boat was attacked with depth charges, but without result. U-110 was shadowing the convoy, and the next day, on March 16th, she was joined by three other U-boats, U-37, U-99, and U-100. The wolf pack struck as night fell. U-100 was detected while approaching the convoy by HMS Vanek, equipped with a naval radar. This U-boat was commanded by Joachim Shepke, one of the most famous U-boat commanders, who, unlike Preen or Kreshmer, was a convicted Nazi. While he was being chased, Kreshmer was ready to strike. His U-boat dived and surfaced inside the convoy. The escort ships were busy pursuing Shepke, so the convoy became easy prey. Kreshmer ordered to fire. They shot at one ship after another. U-99 sunk five vessels and damaged another one. This was an impressive achievement, but the rest of the wolf pack was unable to penetrate the convoy. Shepke was relentless. Although he was chased off by destroyers, he did not intend to give up. While U-100 was preparing for another attack, HMS Walker picked up a contact. Donald McIntyre, in charge of the 5th Escort Group, shouted orders and HMS Walker increased her speed and changed the course. Shepke realized they were spotted and sent U-99 on crash dive. When HMS Walker was passing the spot U-boat had been seen, depth charges had been dropped. There was a big explosion, followed by another one two and a half minutes later, sending orange flesh to the surface. They believed the submarine was sunk, but U-100 had only been damaged as the depth charge exploded too deep. The contact had been regained in the following 30 minutes, as the Shepke took very irrational decision to try to attack once again. This time, HMS Fanuc joined the hunt, and both destroyers had launched a furious attack. U-100 had been badly damaged by the depth charges and dived to the depth of 750 feet. No U-boat was that deep ever before. All instruments were smashed, there were floods on board, and the pumps were not working. Shepke, having no choice, decided to blow the tanks and surface. The submarine was located by radar on board HMS Vanek, otherwise U-100 would be safe, as she was about a thousand meters away from the destroyer. Shepke was desperately trying to save his boat, but it was too late. He had no chance to escape. He shouted orders down to Conning Tower, and his men started to man the cannon. But HMS Vanek was charging at full speed, aiming at the U-boat's Conning Tower. A few seconds later, a message had been received on board the HMS Walker. Have rammed and sunk U-boat. 
This quick, terse message had caused great joy on board Allied destroyers. Shepke made a mistake, giving wrong orders as he believed, until the last second the destroyer will miss his U-boat. HMS Vanek struck his submarine by the conning tower. Shepke's leg got cut off and he himself was crushed against the periscope. About 10 men had managed to leave U-100 and six were picked up and taken POW. As the HMS Vanek was picking up the survivors, HMS Walker was circling the destroyer, providing protection. At the same time, Otto Kreschmer was preparing to go back to Lorient. To do that, he would have to circle the HX-112 convoy he attacked so successfully a few hours earlier. The watch on the conning tower was not alert as it should be, and, and the watch officer. U-99 Second Officer Peterson spotted the destroyer and sounded the alarm. The submarine dived. That was against standing orders. U-99 was not seen on the surface, but was quickly detected by HMS Walker while underwater. At 3.37 a.m., an Aztec operator signaled a contact. He was firm that he was a submarine. Captain McIntyre quickly decided to attack. U-99 dived to the depth of 120 meters. The crew had heard the destroyer passing above them, and after a few seconds, HMS Walker dropped six perfectly aimed depth charges. All instruments on the submarine were smashed, and there was no light. No one dared make an unnecessary move. Trying to remain in absolute silence, the crew were using small flashlights, and there was only one depth gauge still working. According to Kreschmer, U-99 have gone to the depth of about 607 feet, 185 meters, and the water had entered the submarine. Finally, Kreschmer ordered to blow the water out of the ballast tanks, and U-99 shot to the surface. It was 3.50 a.m. when Kreschmer opened the hatch and climbed out. Initially, he was hoping U-99 will be able to escape on surface, but the submarine was too damaged. As HMS Walker was preparing for another attack, they received signal from HMS Vanek, reporting a surfaced U-boat. Both destroyers opened fire at U-99 only four minutes after she surfaced. Kreschmer wanted to return fire, but her gun was destroyed. Both destroyers ceased fire after two minutes. Kreschmer informed his crew that their boat was sinking and will remain on the surface for 10 to 15 minutes. The engineering officer and first lieutenant have gone back to open valves to make sure U-99 will sink, preventing the British from capturing the boat. Kreschmer had sent a message to Captain Donald McIntyre, please save my crew. Don't scuttle the boat, McIntyre replied. What is scuttle? Don't sink the boat. Some sailors jumped into the water, with the other one staying on deck. Captain McIntyre ordered to throw scrambling nets, and the British sailors started to pick up the Germans. Overall, five officers and 35 men were rescued by the British. Before leaving U-99, Otto Kreschmer had sent one last message to U-Boat Command. Depth charges. Two destroyers. 53.00 tons. Boat scuttled. Kreschmer. Heil Hitler. Kreschmer was met by Captain McIntyre, who, after a small talk, asked Kreschmer if he could play bridge. When he answered yes, McIntyre replied, good. Now we have a fourth. On board HMS Walker, U-boat men were sharing the same mess with survivors from ships sunken by the German U-boats. The following night, from 17th to 18th, some of their badges and insignia were taken by one of the merchant sailors. When this was discovered, the items were returned. Five U-boat men were sleeping and eating with the British in the mess on board HMS Vanek. They were causing no problems and were talking with one of the sailors who knew a bit of the German language. Before leaving the ship, they were given a small package of chocolate by British sailors. Walking down the ramp in Liverpool, they all turned and waved farewell to HMS Vanek crew. One of them raised an arm in Nazi salute. 
They all believe that Germany would win and that they will be free in the next few months. The loss of three U-boat aces during one month was a big blow against the U-boat arm. It was also a propaganda disaster to the morale of the other U-boat men. Preen, Kreschmer, and Shepke were very successful commanders and could not be replaced. It was the first minor turning point in the Battle of the Atlantic.